you feel like your body is inflamed, maybe you're trying to figure out how do I tell if I have inflammation in my body. My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to break down some of the testing and how to look at and understand if you have inflammation going on and where it might be coming from. So if you like this kind of information on nutrition, hormones, health, just trying to expand your health awareness and understand what's going on in your body, click on that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this one. Now for a quick disclaimer, the information in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not intended as a treatment for any health condition or as a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or medical profession. It should be used as an educational guide to deeper your understanding of your own health and treatment success. If medical attention is needed, don't delay in seeking that attention. All right, well, let's look at how to tell if you have inflammation. So how do you tell if you have inflammation? Well, there are subjective, you know, something you feel and objective markers, something you can measure. And there's, of course, purely inflammatory markers. And then there's things that are more suggestive of inflammation as well. Of course, from the subjective side, you can sometimes tell this by how you feel. Maybe you feel joint aches or maybe some swelling or other things going on. Problem with those is that it may not be from an actual increase in systemic immune activity. Degenerative arthritis, also known as osteoarthritis, is not a systemic inflammatory process. It's more of a local, you know, maybe just in two fingers or both hands kind of Thing. Rheumatoid arthritis, by contrast, is a more systemic inflammatory process and therefore lends itself to being able to do blood tests and being able to detect that inflammation through objective measurements. And this is the best way to know and look at if you have inflammation is to do some testing. So these are objective measurements. And within this, there are the classic markers like CRP, also known as C-reactive protein, and high sensitivity C-reactive protein. They're the same test. One just gives a different reference range than the other. They're both measuring a protein, C-reactive protein. There's also sedimentation rate, platelet count, white blood cell count. And these are all examples of tests that can inform us about the relative amount of inflammation occurring in your body. Just as a reminder, when we talk about inflammation, we're talking about increased activity of your immune system. So if we broaden that definition a little bit and broaden our test measurements, that include things that show increased immune activity, we get some of the non class classical or suggestive markers of inflammation. For example, there are markers of increased allergy response like IgE. You can measure total IgE, and if you have a high amount of total IgE, it means your body is responding to a lot of allergens. Could be from food, could be from your environment, could be from lots of different things going on, but you're probably allergic to something you're being exposed to. Increased mucous membrane activity, whether it's cough, inflammation in your mouth, any of these things would cause an increase in in IgA levels in your blood. Now, sometimes you may have those symptoms, those problems, and you don't see the high IgA in your blood, but it's another way to look at increased immune activity. There are also, of course, specific digestive inflammatory markers like stool calprotectin, serum zonulin, and many other digestive tests that can tell us about what's going on in that specific environment. Something as simple as elevated glucose or hemoglobin A1c can also be looked at as an inflammatory process because there is a tissue damage effect in therefore an inflammation process when you have elevations in blood sugar beyond what's considered physiologic. Glucose and other blood sugar measurements are not typically looked at as inflammatory markers, and people with diabetes don't always have elevated markers for the classic inflammation markers like CRP, etc., and things like that. But just goes to show just if we brought in the idea of increased immune activity, you can put a lot of things in this category of inflammation. So this question of how to tell if you have inflammation should really be based on specific symptoms that you have so that the testing can be targeted to those areas where those symptoms are located. Maybe it's organ specific, maybe it's specific to the digestive tract, maybe it's specific to the kidneys. Understanding those symptoms can really give us a better understanding of what tests to do to isolate where that inflammation is coming from, what's causing the inflammation, which is really why you would test to begin with, is to really understand what's going on, and that informs how you would treat it. Of course, even if we're testing specific areas of the body for inflammation, like the digestive tract, it's also wise to look at those more global markers, the classic and in systemic inflammatory markers like C-reactive protein, set rate, and other things like this. Now, there are many other tests that can be done. These are the more common ones that are used, typically covered by insurance. There's a much broader 
broader range of inflammatory markers. And so this is definitely not a comprehensive list of all the different ways to look for inflammation, but it should at least give you a better idea of how to tell if you have inflammation. So that should give you a better understanding of how to tell if you have inflammation. If you do have questions about any of the topics in this video or something similar to this, drop it in the comment section. I may do a separate video on that topic. Definitely try and answer your question. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.